make streams flow in every field to carry blessing to your children till they spring from the ground tearing down on all who burn to make streams flow in every field to carry blessing to your children till they spring Oh! 
We tried to get this right. Let me just start it.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just come on in here. Just have something. Ooh, it's kind of quiet. So every gathering usually has a theme, I guess, right? I think this year's theme is restoration. And I just have a quick story before I give this. I think it's a prophetic word. Um, Monday before the gathering, I found notes of a vision I had had, and I don't think I'm going to share the vision. The only thing you need to know about it is I have notes. It's not long, but I just have notes. <laughs> um, part of the vision was there is this guy in a tree. So that made me look up about Zac. Guy in a tree, Z Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. So, that made me look up the scripture about him, which is Luke 19, 1 through 10. And people were wondering why God, or why Jesus would hang out with him, or why he would want to be with him in his house. And Jesus' reply is, Today is salvation day in this home, for the Son of Man came to find and restore the lost. And... Jesus was, his craftsmanship was, he was taught to be a woodworker, a carpenter, which in that day was a woodworker. And in that day, a woodworker didn't just mean you built things out of wood. It meant that you restored things that needed to be fixed. And that brought me to, I watched this show called Fixer Upper. <laughs> And there's a lot of builders in this place. Obviously, we're building in something that's been restored. And, and Fixer Upper, what they do is, these, this couple, they see these bad houses, at least they look bad to other people, but they see them for their potential and what they can be. And they want to make them beautiful so that the p other people can see what they see in them. And it's a process. You know, they have demolition. They have to tear down the things that people have put on them. They have to tear out the things that don't belong there and things that maybe has made them lose their luster. And I just believe that that's the word, is Jesus is coming to bring restoration to us. And it might hurt because he's gonna have to tear down some old things to make room for the new. And he wants to make you look like to other people the way he sees you. And I just believe right now that Jesus is restoring faith, whether it's faith in him or faith in yourself. He's restoring finances right now. He's restoring faith right now. He's restoring your belief right now. He's restoring you with healing right now. I have to look back at my notes. He's restoring your purity. He's restoring you from bitterness. He's restoring your courage. He's restoring your energy. And he's restoring your luster. Too long we've been walking around not living up to our full potential. But take heart. Let Jesus restore you. Whatever it is, let go of the old to make way for the new. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Awesome. Awesome. Timothy James. Praise the Lord. Wow, what an awesome time of worship. And uh, thank you, Nessa, for that wonderful prophetic word. How many like the classic video uh, that was displaying? 
<laughs> I think I recognized uh, a few people in that video, uh, including uh, someone that it reminded me of a song that they sing, angels watching over me. <laughs> Did you guys catch that? Um, <laughs> I think I caught Vincent in the background. <laughs> He's a good friend of our community too and uh, uh, goes way back with Leonard Jones. Um, and I was reminded uh, with that video of thinking, you know, we, we had, uh, back in the day, we used to meet at a tent. And the creamery uh, at the time was just a shell of uh, what, what it's been rebuilt and restored into now. Um, there was no roof. And uh, I can remember walking through here, and um, it's difficult to put into words. Um, the uh, condition, the structure was intact. And uh, I'll never forget um, being across the street. And it was just uh, a few weeks, and, and we were talking about this recently with Pete and Pam. Um, and there was an economic change going on in the nation. And I'll never forget when Pete said, now is the time that the Lord is calling us to restore the creamery. And I, at the time I was shocked, and we were just talking about this, and I said, that really made an impression on me. I was shocked because, um, and I, I think Pete even mentioned that when we did as a community, when we banded together to restore this building, it moved the banks and local businesses forward. And how many know there's, nev there's never a down cycle in the kingdom economy? So if we find ourselves going through uh, financial difficulty, as we heard earlier this morning uh, from Cassidy and Paula, we need to move on what God is calling us to do. Um, it's not about what we don't have, but what we have in our hand. And uh, as uh, Pete likes to remind us it's not about God trying to get something from us. He's trying to get something to us. Amen? Um, as we prepare our offering, um, you know, I've heard the saying, and maybe some of us here have heard the saying, uh, money talks. But all mine ever says is goodbye. <laughs> I'll admit that was a joke. <laughs> you know, I think one of our strengths as a community is uh, unselfish generosity. And um, I really believe now is the time that um, the Lord is releasing a wave of his goodness in financial breakthrough. And as we heard this morning as well, uh, it has to do with our heart attitude, being willing to have good character, being servant-hearted. Um, I can think of a gathering uh, a few years back when there were myself and a few of us got together, and for about a week before the gathering, we all came to the creamery and helped to set up the live streaming. And how many have been blessed by the live stream video? Um, Bob Isaacson did a lot of the heavy lifting with the coding and uh, Jonathan Kratzky uh, and many others were involved. And we did that just to volunteer um, and bless the Lord and bless his people. And I remember um, it's very, amazing to me how since then it seems like the Lord has turned around and said, I saw what you did out of no expectation for a return, and I'm going to bless your businesses. And uh, I've experienced that. I know 
many others here in the community have. I think that's one of our strengths as a community is un unselfish generosity, not only with finances, but with our time, with our talents. Um, and so I believe uh, for everyone who's here today, everyone who's watching on the live stream, uh, a wave of the Lord's goodness is being released uh, with financial breakthrough. And uh, we also want to bless our guests, uh, Nolan Clark and Leonard Jones. Um, let's go ahead and just give a, a clap praise for, for them. And one last thing, um, I felt uh, for Leonard in particular, I don't know if he's uh, here in the room. Uh, um, Leonard, are, are you here? Just give a wave if you're, if you're here. Um, I can perhaps uh, share this again with him later. But I believe the Lord's going to release a creative instrumentation for, for him and for his school. Um, and I felt like, and this might sound a little bit unusual, but I, the thing I felt w was from the Holy Spirit I was getting was something like um, a Beatles guitar. And maybe not that specifically, but how many believe that the Lord uh, is worthy of being uh, the highest praise? And, and I believe in these latter days, um, the best... Uh, is going to be used for the king. And so I really believe that something of that value and quality uh, is going to be just a supernatural breakthrough. And so we want to speak life into that and, and also pray uh, for the blessing of the Lord. So Father, I just thank you so much for this wonderful time of worship. And Lord... Uh, as we've heard uh, throughout uh, the gathering this weekend, uh, Lord, you're, you're worthy of the highest praise. And so we uh, honor you. We, we say you're worthy to be anointed the, the king of glory. And Lord, we ask that you would be begin to release uh, a wave of financial blessing, Lord, a wave of your goodness for everyone here. Lord, every business, every home, every family would be blessed. Um, and be able to uh, share the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and share the grace and the love of Jesus Christ with the lost and dying world that's in, in need of a savior as, and is in need of hope. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that. And we say all this, uh, praise your name. And if we could uh, just praise the Lord as we come, um, we... Uh, Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, I just have a chance to spend a few minutes with you before Nolan Clark gets up here. And uh, I just want to say that I really 
Uh, the, the ministry at this gathering has been phenomenal. Amen? And uh, we are indebted to the people that have come and uh, labored here with us. And their, their messages are... <laughs> I, I, could, I didn't take that good of notes this time, but uh, I found that I probably don't have to, didn't have to make as many as, as I did because uh, they were very, very impactful. Uh, all the way from Adam, Adam Cates to Nolan and Leonard, uh, including Wendell Danielson, uh, one of our own. <laughs> Let's give it up for some of our own here this week. And I, I love this. Uh, and then it, actually later, I actually have other quotes in one of my Bibles that I've written signed uh, Wendell Danielson that he quoted this, or he said it, but this one was this week, you, <laughs> you have problems if you can't do anything without thinking about money. You have problems if you can't do anything without thinking about money. That's when it got real quiet, Wendell, right, everywhere. That's a very, very, very powerful. And uh, I'd like to give a little synopsis of every message, but I, I won't do that. But the gathering to me is a really very, uh, it's become an, uh, an awesome tradition. You know, some traditions are good. There, there are traditions of the fathers that are good, and, and I don't even go back to the beginning of, the, of these gatherings but I go back a ways. And uh, one thing I love about the gathering in this time of year, when I think about the gathering, I think about hot, smoldering Minnesota weather. And I love this building and I love this floor. And if you haven't tried this, there's only a few weeks in the state of Minnesota where you can lay out on this floor and actually receive cooling ministry <laughs> permeating through your body and you try other times of the year it doesn't have quite that effect unless you have you know your multiple layered clothing but you get on this floor and it's just this is the time of year to do it so if you're here tonight and you haven't done that yet uh, do that so the gathering well, one scripture I think about is that the gathering is unto him, right? And I, and I do love the, the phrase last night, I thought very prophetic and how profound and how true that we need and are having and are going to have a Jesus revival. And I like that he didn't say, uh, you know, another Jesus people revival, Though that would be, you know, that would be okay, but God's got something better, and it may just be the, uh, the coattails of a Jesus revival. Maybe something unlike anything that we've ever seen before is yet to take place. And I wanted to share a quick testimony about, about three weeks ago, we had a, a storm that went through the Detroit Lakes area. And I don't believe it hit, you had in the times past, Otter Tail has been lowered before. And, uh, but we had one go through our area and I call, I'm calling it the 100, we've only lived there about 20 years, but I'm calling it the 100 year storm. And uh, we have, uh, our property contains, contains 50 acres of land and a, a big portion of that is wooded, and we lost a minimum. I haven't actually done the final count, but I'm looking at 50 plus trees that were laid over. Some of them just, I mean, you go out and look and they just snap right in the middle. Some of them just turn over from the roots. Some of them have big, huge limbs that just split off. Some big, 
big mammoth red oaks will just twist and deform and fall. We had never seen anything like it before. And I couldn't help but be reminded of the scripture that says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Now, first of all, let me say the night before, right as the storm was coming in, I wanted to, I wanted to really, uh, I was thinking about not praying, actually. I was, you know, sometimes praying even to a guy is like asking for directions. It's like, okay, we're, we're men. God is with us. I'm going to see how long I can <laughs> endure this without praying. Let me see if I can make this trial without praying. Just because God's here, he'll protect me. You know, not like I'm against prayer, but... But praise God, my wife said, she said, let's pray. And so how many know that that's a good, that's a good sign? <laughs> when your wife says, let's pray, that, that's a good sign, just do it. So we held hands and we prayed. And this thing supposedly was, you know, you really don't believe it's going to be the 100-year storm. That's one problem. And... So we prayed, and immediately I just began to pray, God, I pray for, and I began to mention my neighbors, my son-in-law, Mike Erb, and our daughter, Jessica, and their five kids live right next to us. I prayed for them and their safety, and I prayed, and I began to name off the saints and even the non-saints that I knew in the area, and I began to pray, God, for your protection and deliverance, let no evil or harm come upon them. And so the, st the storm comes through, and uh, the, that night, even when the storm was dry, I went out, and it was scary because I began to see, you know, timber that was down. And... I was so thankful that my wife uh, wanted to pray and that we did pray because we don't just live around the woods. We live in the woods. I mean, in the woods. Sometimes uh, during the year, the sun goes down about three in the afternoon at our place. <laughs> uh, we live in the woods. And, uh, and nothing, you know, hit our house uh, one big tree on our property that we mow that we could look out and see fell. But every, the property was spared, and none of our neighbors were hurt or injured that I heard of. And later, as my wife and I were talking about it, she said, and I was kind of gloating in the fact, you know, God answered our prayer. Isn't that good? And, of course, she is always trying to one-up me. <laughs> yeah, and she says... Well, we should have prayed for the land. We should have prayed for the trees. We should have prayed for, and in my righteous indignation, it's like, what? No, but she was right. I think, you know, God could have saved the trees. According to your faith, be it unto you. But we're going to have to just settle, settle for a lot of firewood. <laughs> but uh, everything, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And one thing about these trees, and I was saying this to my son. My son looked up at this one tree, and he said, Dad, that looked like it was struck by lightning. And I said, actually, no, it wasn't. That tree had an issue. <laughs> and... And I realized that, and I went on to say that every tree that has an, if, if it has an issue, it's even if it even is close to having an issue, a 70 mile an hour wind will reveal it. And it just made me want to think about my own life. You know, God, if there's issues in my life, the wind is going to reveal it.
You know, the scripture says everything that can be shaken will be shaken, and only that which cannot be shaken will remain. Somebody said, well, that's an Old Testament scripture. Yes, but the problem is it's also quoted in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews. So, but, I, you know, going into this, even this word of restoration, one way that God restores is that he, the shaking comes and shakes that which can be shaken so that only that which cannot be shaken re can remain. And he has out of that something glorious and beautiful and awesome and wonderful to work with. In the book of Peter, uh, Peter prayed that we would be strengthened. Strengthened, and the word strengthened there is a word that's only found one time in the Greek, and, I, and it means to be strengthened to the point of not a warping or having any possibility of warping or splitting. And I think uh, that's the kind of people that, that God wants. That's the kind of church that God wants. And when the shaking comes, and this week, don't think the shaking, it's not, God isn't just, he doesn't shake us with evil. He shakes us with his word. He shakes us by his spirit. He can use circumstances, right? But God is not the author of evil. And he doesn't plan evil. He doesn't bring evil. But sometimes when people think of shaking, oh, everything, it's always the bad stuff. No. The word of the Lord brought to us this weekend by these, by our brothers here, is a way of, of shaking us. To shake our thinking, shake our mindsets. Shaking us to wake us. So that we can be like Peter and that we can come out of the shaking and Jesus says to us, now go out of that shaking. You've been sifted, but now go and strengthen the brethren. Amen. God speed to you. Now I'm introducing Nolan. Nolan, I want you to come up. Bring it on, brother. Bring it to us. You have been noble, above nobility and greatness in bringing the word, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I need you to stand up with me for a second and um, <coughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, God's many things, so many sides of God, so many faces of God. But he's a warrior. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, which is the Lord of the angel army. The Lord strong and mighty in what? In battle. He's the King of glory. Sometimes, you know, there's battles that are unique to your lives. There's battles that are unique to my life. There's battles we have in common, but there's battles that are unique. Some of those battles are long, and some of those battles are strong. I always, you always hope for in battle that it could be quick, quick knockout. <laughs> Sometimes battles are long and they're strong, and, um, and that's where it's difficult, because we get weary, we get tired, and it's like, ah, uh, we give up. Jesus said, men ought always to pray, not grow weary, not faint. And the greatest warriors are those that even when they're tired, they're like Shama, and they just hold on. They get knocked down, they get up again. I feel like God wants to rip the roof off this place tonight to end this, and I think we're going to have some great joy here at the end. But I, in the middle of worship, which was not even in my head or not in my message, I just saw the fierceness of God. I was literally struck by the fierceness of God. I saw the face of the lion of God, but there was like a, a roar, like an, an just a... I can't even explain what it was. It was just a fierceness. And I was, whew. And I saw the enemies, the lion, you know, the lion, the, the enemy's called the roaring lion. But he's, a, he's an imposter. And I just felt like God wanted to uh, give a little, a little punch back to the enemy. 
sometimes God, he's a real gentleman. He lets the enemy go first, you know, like when Elijah was facing the prophets of Baal. <laughs> he's like, you guys go first. And the prophets of Baal, they do their thing and they call on their, they call on their gods. And then Elijah goes, okay, he's, he's like, my turn now. <laughs> By the way, joy is a great thing to have in battle. The scariest thing in the world in a, in a fight is if you've hit someone with your best shot <laughs> and they look at you and start laughing, <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and, and that's what God does to the enemy. He says, Psalm 2, the enemy rages and, and the Lord sits in heaven and he, and he laughs. <laughs> He's like, that's all you got. But then it says, then he terrifies them in his anger. <laughs> Then he goes, now it's my turn. And I just felt like, I don't know <laughs> what it is, but I felt like, you know, God wants to train our hands, your hands, my hands. Trains my hands, Psalm 144, my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He's like, God could have took out Pharaoh without Moses, but he goes, I'm going to use you. Take this. Hold up your hands. And, and all Moses had in his hand was just a, a rod of authority, but he'd, he'd hold it up against the sorcerers, the false gods, the powers of Egypt. You see, there's a battle. The battles in your life, yeah, there's natural battles in politics and in our homes and our lives and our children. But there's unseen forces behind them. Even when David fought Goliath, it said Goliath cursed David by his gods. It wasn't really just a battle of two men. It was a battle of gods. And David said, I'm not coming in my name. I'm coming in the name of my God. And he just let a little stone go. Boom. Maybe he just got a little shot tonight. Just a little punch. But I want you to think of those things that have most hurt you, worried you, frustrated you, your own personal battle. Can you? And now, now I want you to take hold of something, a little bit of your faith, but this is a, f there's different kinds, you know, sometimes our faith rests, sometimes our faith rejoices, and sometimes our faith fights, fight the good fight of faith. So I want you just to, I'm going to ask you for a moment, I'm going to hold up my hands here in a moment. I just, I don't know, I just felt, I saw this picture of God just wants to release his authority against the powers that be, even in this region, even in my region, in my home. So, can you just hold your hands up, I'm going to ask the Lord to put in your hand just a weapon. Because we need all, all men and women, all children, you know. We, all, we can all be warriors in this. So, Lord, we just stand in the name of Jesus. We stand, Ephesians 6 says, stand and having done all, stand. And we rebuke the thief who's stolen from us. We command him to give back. That which belongs to the Lord. That which belongs to us. And we fight in the name of Jesus. We pray you'd loose your power, God. In the name of Jesus, you'd come against that which has come against us. And you'd break through in our homes. You would break through in our churches. You'd break through in our children. And you'd break through in our health and our finances. And you would train our hands for war and our fingers for battle. Whether our weapon is worship, our intercession, our giving train our hands for war train our fingers for battle help us to see you Lord strong and mighty in battle and you said be strong in the Lord and the power of his might so Lord make us strong tonight make us strong tonight not in ourselves but in you we pray for a breakthrough God not just here tonight but a breakthrough in Otter Tail, a breakthrough in this region, a breakthrough in Minnesota, a breakthrough in America, a breakthrough in Canada, a And Lord, you have an authority over legions. Nakia. Loria, a man with a legion, that those legions trembled before you. Loria, tia. I think of that word of Martin Luther who said, Our enemy, grim, we tremble not at him. Uliandia.
One little word shall fell him, Hilitia. And in the name of Jesus, I pray those giants that people are facing would fall tonight. Luria, whatever giants they faced for a long time would fall. Miliandia over their families, over their children. Liti, the devourer that stole from them, that stole their finances, the devourer that stole their health. Luria, Nia, Tia, we command it to be brought back. Luria, and laid at our feet in the name of Jesus. Luria, Nia, Tia, Masia, because we do not submit to the enemy. Luria, we do not submit to any principality. Miliandia, we submit to Jesus. Luria, we resist the devil, and that's a strong word resist. Liatia, and we drive out devils. Milatia, and we shall be victorious. So God, I pray that you would enlist people in this place to be warriors, to be fighters, to be strong. The women to be Deborah's, the men to be David's. And the line of Judah would rise in this place. And the line of Judah would rise in this place. And you loose such a mighty, a rushing, violent wind. And you loose a holy violence. You loose a holy violence. To the works of the enemy that you would destroy the works of the devil. For this reason was the Son of God manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Destroy the works of the devil, Lord. Destroy sickness and disease. Destroy the power of the enemy again that comes against this place. Loose every Everyone, Iliatia, break curses and release your blessing. We pray, God, for all that's been robbed to be brought back and even more that you would indeed restore, Lia Takaya, that you would indeed restore, that you would indeed restore and even more, that they would have a faith to fight for even more. I want you to believe right now, I want you to lay hold of it. By faith, just in this moment, this is just a prophetic moment that I felt. You know, sometimes you're just enduring a fight. Sometimes you're not, you don't feel like you're overcoming. You're just, oh, I'm just enduring. Hell's against me. I'm just trying to hang on, right? Job just endured. Remember the endurance of Job. But what happened at the end when he endured? He received double. Hold up your hands for your double portion. He is here. And that word was true. It was shared tonight by both testimonies. It's a time of restoration. Leatia. It's a time of restoration from what's been robbed from you. And the Lord wants to rebuke and he wants to restore even more in the presence of your enemies. So Lord, we just lay hold of what's been robbed from us, even from our family trees, even from our lineage, even from our children. We won't give that because it belongs to our children. The blessings of the Lord are rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Bless, bless, bless. God, I believe blessing is stronger than cursing. And you broke the curse on Calvary. Break every curse that comes against our family. Stop any powers or people that would curse anyone in this place. We break the power of the curse and we release blessing in its place. And I pray for greater grace. <laughs> greater grace. <laughs> greater grace. Greater grace. Greater grace. Greater works. Greater works. Greater wealth. Greater wealth. Greater anointings. Greater songs. Greater miracles. Greater, greater, greater. That the best days are yet to come. That the best wines yet to be poured out, that the best miracles are yet to be seen. Luria, release it, God. And, and it belongs to your church. And so we, we take back what's been robbed from the church. Luria, we take back the powers of the age to come. Luria, and we, we, we say these things and we take it by faith, by faith, by faith in the name and in the power and in the promise of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. You can give a little clap if you want now. Thank you. Okay, I can, I'll feel better now, and I'll be nicer when I preach. I just had that, you know, when you get that little fight in you, I'm like, oh, all of a sudden, I, I so I just, I like to punch the enemy because he's punched me. All right. <laughs> Woo. Whoa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just got to put some on here so my notes don't fly away. Uh, why don't you turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke and the fifth chapter? <laughs> and uh, I, have a, I have a mission here tonight, <laughs> and it's to rip off a roof off your life. Any limitations, 
any limitations, any limitations that you feel, any limitations that have been placed over you that aren't from God, any limitations that you've accepted that aren't from God, any limitations that others have spoken over you that aren't from God, a anything that has put a roof over you and said you can go thus far and no more, you can, you can see this much and no more, any false ceiling, I, I want to see breakthrough for you and I want to see breakthrough for me. And I want to show you how to get that breakthrough. And sometimes God, sometimes God, well, is waiting to see what we will do when we run into obstacles. You know, that will we find the God of breakthrough? Do you know when David was anointed to be king, it says the enemy came against him in full force. Full force. Because he'd been anointed. Sometimes you think, well, now I've been anointed. I've received a fresh anointing. I got a great prophetic word. I'm going to be king. You know, wow, it's going to be awesome. And then all of a sudden, hell breaks loose against you. Do you ever have that experience? And you go, wow, this is like the exact opposite of what I felt like God just said. And now, because hell is trying to steal that promise from you. Steal that dream from you. Steal that destiny from you. And so what David did in that situation, he said, oh God, he was afraid, like you and I get afraid at times, when you're overwhelmed by the enemy, especially if something is coming against you in like full force, full force. So he said, God, what do I do? And God said, go up against them, and I'm going to break through by your hands. By your hands. I'm going to break through with you. And so David went up and it said, God broke through there like the breakthrough of many waters. And David said, a new name of God was given, the God of breakthrough. He found out that God was the God of breakthrough. You'll never meet God as the God of breakthrough until you have something to break through. Until you have something to break through. And God can break through whatever enemy comes against you. Sickness, disease, demons, whatever it is that comes against you. Limitations, ceilings. But you and I got to be willing to go up against it and by my hands, by your hands, break through. Break through. That's how God trained David to be a warrior. And I long to see the church become a, a mighty church triumphant again. But let me tell you something. The church will not be a church triumphant again unless it becomes the church militant again. And, I, and I'm, by militant, I mean spiritually. And I'm not saying that you all have to fight like me or pray like me or worship like me or preach like me. But I'm saying there has to be uh, some kind of holy fierceness inside of you if you're going to receive your promised land. Like, you know, the promised land had to be fought for. God had given it to them, but they had to take it. And, and there's giants in there that had to be overcome. So I want to place inside of you, uh, before I leave, a bit, of, a bit more of a holy fortitude, a bit more of a backbone, a bit more of just strengthen, you know, steady the knees that give way, so hold up the hands that hang down and say, because I believe God has great things for your town. God has great dreams and great prophetic words, and I don't know all the prophetic words that have been spoken over you, and I don't know all the prophetic words that have been spoken over your town, but I believe, I can feel that there's great promises here. But, but I'm just saying, you have to understand, we have to step in and possess that, and sometimes there's an enemy at the gates that wants to discourage you, and you have to be willing to fight for that. Do you know that most of Israel did not enter into the promised land? They entered into heaven when they died, but they didn't enter into the promised land. And it says the reason why they died in the wilderness is because the ones who are of military age who should have fought wouldn't fight. They got there and they said, oh, the giants are too big. It's too hard. It's too difficult. They got negative and they, they got unbelieving. And, and they, they made the enemy bigger then they're God. They said, oh, the enemy's so big, and we're like grasshoppers in their sight. You know, it's too big. 
cancers are too big, the debts are too big, the challenges are too big. They exalted the mountains rather than the God of the mountains. They, they, they allowed the enemy to exalt himself, and so they wandered, and they experienced what I would call wilderness Christianity. Now, we all go through seasons of the wilderness, but we don't need, they shouldn't have been there for 40 years. They, they, that, that was because they were delayed because of, of, of unbelief, and it was, they had faith when they heard it, but they weren't willing to have the fight of faith. They weren't willing to fight for the promised land. And so I want to put a fight inside of you to get your promised land, to get your breakthrough, that you should not give up one inch of a promise that's been given to you. I'm not going to concede to the enemy one inch, one single thing. He has to give back everything, and I'm not giving him any of my promised land. When God said to Joshua, he said, as far as your eye can see, I've given to you. What has God given you? What's been given to you? What do you see? And, he, and God said, I'll be with you, and I'll, I'll fight for you, and no one will be able to stand before you, but you're going to have to go in. And so what are the promises for this town? What are the promises for this church? Can you remember them? Hey, Paul said this to Timothy, New Testament. He said, Paul, he said, Timothy, remember the prophecies spoken over you? Do you remember the prophecies? You should remember every prophecy that's ever been spoken over you. Do you remember the prophecies spoken over you? Why did he tell him to remember? He said that by them you may fight the good fight. Because by the prophecies... By the promises, he says, you need to fight to enter into that because the enemy is, was not wanting to let Timothy enter into what was prophesied over him. And how did the enemy try and stop him? With fear. That's why Paul said, don't forget Timothy. You know, he hasn't given you a spirit of timidity or fear, but he's given you a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. So he said, stir that up and lay hold of those prophecies and break through. And so that's what we're going to do here tonight. So as I'm preaching, I want this to be applicable to you. When I'm preaching, I'm thinking of, yes, I'm preaching to me. Like I'm coaching you. I'm trying to coach you. I'm like a fight coach. But I'm trying to spiritually coach you. But I'm coaching me. It's a great thing about coaching. You probably know it's teaching. You, you learn more. You remind yourself. When I'm coaching, I'm like, oh, yeah. When I'm preaching, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm taking that back. And so I'm, I'm thinking of the, prof the promises given to me. The dreams given to me, the visions given to me, and, but I want you to think of the ones given to you. And I want you by the end of this to stand and see and believe again, not just for a little bit, but for all that God has promised to you. And we're going to see a breakthrough. Luke chapter 5, uh, verse 17. But so if as I'm preaching, God begins to remind you, because I believe he's going to, remind you of prophecies that are spoken to you, or words over you, I want you to, well, if you don't have a pen, you know, when you get home, write them down. Write them down. Pick them up again. Because some of them are things we've let go of. But they're still there. And you need to pick that sword up again and go, oh, yeah, that belongs to me. Excuse me, enemy. That belongs to me. <laughs> this belongs to me. Oh, yeah, this belongs to me. I want you to pick up everything that's been given to you and give nothing to the enemy. So, God, I pray you'd use this word for your glory and you, would, and you would empower people here in faith and hope and love to see all the breakthrough that you have for them in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. On one, I'm going to teach you how to do that, hopefully, by the grace of God. On one of these days, as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present with him to heal. Did you hear that? He's preaching, and there's religious leaders everywhere. And they're watching him. Because the religious people are always watching Jesus. Normally looking for something to accuse him. Because that's really what religion is good at. <laughs> Accusation. Like, religion would sit through... A sermon just looking for the one thing that you disagree with. <laughs> That's what a religious spirit does. You know, they would watch Jesus all the time to accuse him. And so they're there, and it says the power of the Lord was present. There was power present in an unusual way. It's not that there wasn't, Jesus wasn't always powerful, but that day it was like, woof. 
there's a special power here for a special purpose. There's a power to heal. We have to become sensitive to realize the moments and the seasons that we're in. And so there's power present to heal. Verse 18, and behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man, it was a friend of theirs, who was paralyzed. And they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. So there's power in this house with Jesus. And some people heard of it, and so they're bringing their friend in. And they go, oh, this is awesome. Jesus has power to heal. Our friend needs healing. And there's power here on earth. Let's touch it. So they're trying to bring him in before Jesus. But here's the problem. Oh, I don't you wish it was just always so easy? That we could just like always just instantly get our McMiracle. You know, we pull up to the drive through and we get our order and boom, there's our miracle. Sometimes, but sometimes it's difficult. And by the way, this is what, you know, as they would say, separates the men from the boys. What do you do when it's difficult? What do you do when it's not easy? So they were trying to get their friend before Jesus, verse 19, but finding no way to bring him in. They went home and said, well, it must not be God's will. <laughs> I guess we tried. We tried to get our miracle. We tried to get our healing. We'd heard from a preacher that Jesus has power to heal, but, you know, it must not be his will for me. It must not be, must not be, you know, the time or something. I mean, they could have just gone home because they tried and they found no way in. No way to bring him in because of the crowd. So what do you do in those moments when it's difficult? What do you do in the moments when you're trying to connect to Jesus but you can't get there? What do you do in that moment when you're trying to find the power of God for healing and you can't find it? What do you do when you're trying to find the power of God to prosper you but you can't find it? What, what do you do when you try and find the power of God to bring revival in your home, but you can't find it? Because there's difficulty. Whatever the reason is, they tried to get in, but they couldn't. This one was a crowd, but you and I, I can think of all these reasons why I say, well, God, I tried. And I, I've done this too. I'm like, God, I tried. I tried, but I couldn't. So what did they do? They went up on the roof. They went up on the roof. And they let him down with his bed, through the tiles, into the midst before Jesus. Wow. I, want, like, I know you all know this story. You probably heard this story. But I want you to think of this. Would you do this? Would I do this? Like, am I vested enough to get my breakthrough that I would do whatever it takes? Would, would I? Or would I say, hey, I tried and I couldn't get through? Or do I go and find a way to break through? Or do I give up and go, well, I tried. I believed it was meant to be, but it must not be. What do you do when you run into an obstacle? What do you do when something's in the way? What do you do when it doesn't work out right away? What do you do? Well, these guys said, let's get up on a roof and let's find another way in. And they began to rip the tiles out and they lowered their friend down before Jesus. Verse 20. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven you. I love this about Jesus, and this is an important part, by the way, because there's things that have to be, that stand between us and our miracle. One thing was a roof, and so they had to break through the roof. There's things that you got to break through that stand in the way of your freedom, your prosperity, your family. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's someone they love. These guys went and did it not for themselves. They didn't need to be healed. They were bringing their friend in. Maybe, maybe you don't feel like fighting for your breakthrough, but if you love someone else, you might kick a hole through a roof for them. What would you do for your children? What would love do? What would love do to get a breakthrough? What would love do? Would love kick a hole through the roof? Or would you go, hey, man, I just feel like I ran into a roof. I can't get through it. Something, I just hit a ceiling. I can't get through it. Oh, oh well. Hmm. Or love goes, no, let's kick a hole through that roof. But we have things to break through. But Je once they, they did, so they lower him down. And then Jesus says, hey, here's the thing that Jesus came to take away. 
anything that stands between you and him. So he says, hey, your sins are forgiven. So don't let any guilt or shame stop you from what I'm about to do. And the Pharisees, of course, they get mad because that's what religion does. It's perpetually offended. And the scribes and the Pharisees begin to question, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, answered them, why do you question this in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Arise up and walk. But that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, pick up your bed and go home. And immediately he rose up before them and picked up what he'd been lying on and he went home, glorifying God. What a great miracle! What a great miracle! What a great moment! And listen to what everybody said. And amazement sees them all. I want to see amazement sees people. Amazement sees them. That's a strong word. Like amazement is, I don't know if there's an angel name. Amazement just went up and grabbed them and seized them. But seized them all. <laughs> they're just, they're like, we, and they said, we have never seen things like this before. We have seen extraordinary things. Now let me tell you something. I, when I read this, I'm like, oh, God, I want to see extraordinary things. I want to see things that I've never seen before. I don't want to be gripped by apathy. I want to be gripped by amazement. I want to be seized by amazement. I want to, I want to, I want to see the dead raised. I, I want to see the sick healed. I, I want to see th like amazing things. But I, things that I read about in the Gospels. Things that I read about in church history. I want to experience them. But they would have missed this. They would have actually missed this. We all want to get to the end of this. We all want to have, we all want to see this. Everybody here would go, yeah. Anyone hearing my voice in this would say, oh, who would not want to see extraordinary things? Who would not want to see healings and forgiveness and deliverance and people gripped by God? That's what revival is, by the way. It's like literally whole communities can be seized by the amazement of God. Like they become aware of the goodness of God. Everybody wants to see this. But there's a, there's a flow of the story. They all could have missed this, but four guys, four, I think it says four. Maybe I'm just making that number up. I, I'm just probably picturing four guys, one on each end. Maybe it's, I don't know, but their friends broke through and created this moment. What if they didn't? And who could blame them? I mean, hey, it's really nice. You took your friend. You carried him all the way, however long that was. You carried him to Jesus. And come on, man, you tried. Nobody really expects you to do much more than that. Definitely no one's really expecting you to go, go up on a roof and start, you know, ripping the roof off, breaking through a ceiling. That seems a bit excessive. But because they did, that whole community was seized by God because of three or four. That whole community was seized by God and their friend got a miracle because they did something that, let's be honest, is, seems excessive. Seems quite excessive. And no wonder the Pharisees get offended at this, this Jesus. Wow. We have seen extraordinary things today. Listen, there is power to heal in Christ. There is power in Christ. All authority and all power belongs to me, Jesus said. All power is his. All authority is his. All of it. It belongs to him. Now, there are days of power that come. And when days of power come upon the earth, those are special days. And it says on a certain day, power was present in a special way. But they could have missed that special day of power, which is, by the way, that's what revival is. Days of power. Days of power. Days of the power of God on earth as it is in heaven. Days of power. And your people shall be willing in your day of power. Power to heal the sick. Power to forgive sins. Power to raise the dead. Power to prosper people. Power from on high. 
There are days of power. I, I know God's always powerful, but I also know there's certain seasons that begin to shift. And I go, oh, there's power present right now. I remember being in an incredible uh, meeting in Albany, Oregon with some, uh, some friends of mine. It was once a, a vineyard church, and now it's called Jesus Pursuit Church. Great people, great pastor there, Denny Klein. Some of you might know him. And on the last night, we've been plowing and preaching like we've been here at this gathering. And on the last night, I got, just as I got up, but I literally grabbed the mic, and I was just about to walk on the stage, and I got struck by the presence of the Lord, and I was just standing there in this presence. And I heard the voice of the Lord say this very verse. He said, my power is present tonight to heal. And I was like, okay. And, and he said, let my people know my power is present tonight in this room to heal. So, and, 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 that, and he said to me, and all those who stand tonight will be healed. Now, I've never said something like that before. <laughs> and, and I'm not some great healer. But, but I knew it was the voice that gripped me. Like, gripped me. I was just struck and shook. I was seized by the Spirit. So I said to the people, I said, the power of the Lord is present to heal. And the Lord says tonight, all that stand will be healed. And there was quite a, a large amount of people at this. It was the Holy Smoke Conference. And there was quite a large amount. It was just a packed building. And so many people stood up. And then I was like, oh, I'm kind of afraid now. I'm like, oh. And then I was like, what do I do, Lord? Do I line them up, you know? Do I lay hands on them? And he said, no, I said my power was present to heal. I'm going to heal them. And uh, so as they were standing there, I said, those of you who are around, place your hands on all those who need healing. And the Lord's going to use you this power present to heal. I said, don't, you don't have to intercede. Sometimes we do. You don't have to, uh, you know, shout it out. Though sometimes I'll shout it out. But right now, I said, his power is present. So I want you to put your hands and just say, uh, Jesus heal. And I have never to this day been in a meeting like that, where the power of the Lord just broke, not through my hands. They didn't lay hands on one single person that I remember, not one person. And miracles were just breaking out. And people started running to the altar. The unsaved were there, and they're falling. It was like things I'd read about in revival history. They're crying out to Jesus. People are being struck down in this building by the Lord, crying out, holy is the Lord, because miracles were taking place. It, that building was so full of the power of the Lord, you literally had to run to the Lord or run out. Because the power of the Lord was present in an unusual way. God's always powerful, but there's times when it's, it comes near and it's present. And that's what revival is, the days of power. And I am prophesying to you that we are entering into great days of power. The power of God on earth like we've never seen before. And the power of God in the last day's church will be greater than the power of God in the beginning. The power that fell on the day of Pentecost, that was but the first fruits. That was the first feast of Pentecost. And God never planned to pour out his best wine first and then give the cheap stuff in the end days. He said, my power shall be even greater in these last days, and I will pour out such power on the earth that you shall see thousands saved in days. You shall see nations shook. You shall see cities taken, because my power will be present to save and to heal and to deliver. I was actually scared, because you know what happened? It was like I dreamed about these things, I'd read about them, I prayed about them, and I'd been crying out for revival, and now it showed up, and I was like, oh my gosh, what did we just summon into our midst? And I remember looking at Denny, and I'm like, I don't want to touch the ark right now, I don't even know what to do. I mean, it was the most amazing breakthrough. We, people were getting healed in the, in the baptism tanks, it was just the, mo it was the most amazing breakthrough. I didn't realize how special it was. I didn't realize how special it was. I said, if I ever stand in that again, I will never, I will, I, like, because Denny, my good friend Denny, he wanted me to stay and continue meetings. And I, I, I felt like, I don't know, I felt like I couldn't at that time. But I just, I, I realized later, I said, whoa, when days like that come, when there's days of power and you see extraordinary things, you better take your shoes off and know you stand on a holy ground. You better know that God's in your midst. You better know that God's in your midst.
because the, I've, I've been haunted by that in such a good way. Nothing satisfies me anymore because I've tasted of something that I'd only read about. But now I tasted the powers of the age to come. Do you know that's a verse that says the powers of the age to come. They were on earth present with us. That's revival. But sometimes there's obstacles between them. How come, how come we can't just see the kingdom on earth all the time? Sometimes there's obstacles. And we can't always find a way to get there. It's like we see it. You see it. You know, in a meeting, you see it. You see a promise given. You see there's Jesus. There's his healing for me. Or there's his promise for me. Or there's his prosperity and provision for me. Where he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And I'm trying to get to that table to sit down and to feast with him on his goodness. But I don't know how to get there because I can't seem to get in the door. And something's in my way. And maybe it's my unbelief. And maybe it's my fears. Or maybe it's the enemy. But there's obstacles that we can't always get to where he wants us to be. But what do we do when we get into those difficulties? What do we do? When we find obstacles and we can't find the way to our breakthrough. Well, sometimes you got to get up on the roof. <laughs> if you can't go through the door, get up on the roof. Get up on the roof. Listen, this is such an important part I'm about to say to you. There's obstacles. There's ceilings that come over you. And they're trying to stop you. They're trying to limit you. You know, I had a principality appear to me and it said, stop going for revival. Stop teaching and preaching about the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Stop preaching about the powers of the age to come and I'll let you be blessed. I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you alone. But if you, if you, if you keep doing this, I am going to come against you. And it, and it put a fear in me. Because sometimes the things that want to stand between you and your promise and your breakthrough, they're big, they're strong, they're difficult, and, and the enemy does have some power. That's why they're called powers and principalities. If they had no power, they would not be called powers. But they are not all powerful, and, and they, are not, they do not have to have more power than us. Sometimes we allow them to reign. We allow them to stand in our way, but there's ceilings that stand in the way. And this is what I want to give you a piece, uh, a, a picture, a, an idea that for you and I to get our breakthrough, sometimes you have to get above it. You have to get above it. They didn't break through from the side. They didn't break through from below. They broke through from above. Now, I want you to if you don't recognize what your obstacle is, you won't be able to break through it. Now, I'll just give you some ideas for me that I've realized that are some ceilings that get placed over you. And if I had time, I'd explain to you through almost every area of society, there's ceilings that have come. And that every great change in society has come because someone refused that ceiling and somebody broke through. That's every change you'll find in society came because somebody got up above that roof, that ceiling, they said, you can't do this, you, this is impossible. Somebody got above it and, and said, no, I think it's possible. And somebody else broke through and they broke through for us. Everything that you have, the technology, 50 years ago that someone would say, that's impossible. But someone said, it's not impossible and they got above it and they broke through. The four minute mile, that's impossible. Until one guy broke through and then people said, that's possible. I guess we can break through. And that same year, many people broke the four-minute mile. Why? Because somebody raised the ceiling and said, no, you can do it. Because sometimes we accept limits. We accept, you know, that this is good enough. And this is what religion will do to you. Just have a good church service. Just have your ears tickled. Just be happy to get to heaven. You don't need to see the kingdom of heaven on earth because... Maybe Satan said, okay, they're going to go to heaven one day. I, I, I can't, but I'm they're trying to stand between me and God. They try and come over. No, I'm not going to let those things be over me. I have to break through those. But sometimes ceilings, the first ceiling is right here in your mind. That's why when Jesus said, hey, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, repent, which means change your mind. Change your mind. Change the way you think. 
Because there's ceilings inside of you, and you need to recognize what are your ceilings. And, and the reason is, the reason I want to say this strongly to you, because I don't want to l- let you live under limitations that aren't from Christ. Because on the other side of your breakthrough is extraordinary things. On the other side of your breakthrough is extraordinary goodness. On the other side of your breakthrough is the breakthrough of many waters. That God has extraordinary things for you and I and for our children. But we have to break through these ceilings. Sometimes these ceilings are your mindsets. Sometimes the ceilings are lies that we've believed. Sometimes the ceilings are lies that other people have told us. Sometimes these ceilings, you know, do you have something that says, I could never be that? Has somebody told you you could never do that? Is there a voice that whispers in your ear and tries to hold you down and oppress you and go, you can't rise up. You can't get above this. You'll never overcome this. You see, you have to break through those things. Because, and you have to speak back to them. You ha- that's why Jesus said, no, no, speak to your mountain. Because your mountain's speaking to you. You see, Goliath spoke to David. And, oh, I, just, I have so much in this. I want to teach you about breakthrough. Before David even saw Goliath fall, he had to face so many ceilings that he, that he ran into. His brother said, you can't do it. You, his own brothers, his flesh and blood said, you can't do it. What, why are you here? You're just proud. And he had to shove that ceiling off. He said, no, no, there's a cause. And then a, even leadership can put ceilings over you that aren't from God. Saul came to him and said, you can't do it. You're just a boy. You can't overcome. That's too big for you. That's too difficult for you. And, and David said, no, I'm not letting that ceiling come over me. What if David said, yeah, you're right. You're Saul. You're the leader. I'm just a little shepherd boy. I'm going to bow to the wisdom that you're saying. But it wasn't God. And he had to break through that ceiling the soul was trying to place over him. And then he had to break through the old mindset of here, wear my armor. And he said, no, I can't wear that. And then he gets on the battlefield. He's already overcome battles just to get there. Battles that were in his mind. Battles that were from his brothers. All these ceilings that people wanted to hold him down. And he had to break through, break through, break through. And then he gets before Goliath, uh, Goliath and Goliath starts to curse him. And Goliath starts to speak to him because your giant's speaking to you. And Goliath laughs at him and says, you'll never beat me. You're just a boy, and I'm going to feed your body to the birds. And you know what David does? He answers right back. He says, no, I'm going to feed your body to the birds. You're not fe- you, you aren't overcoming me. I'm overcoming you. You're not over me. I'm over you. You know what he's doing? He's rising up above it because Goliath was trying to put a ceiling over him and say, I'm over you. And he said, no, no, you're under me. All things are under my feet. You're under me. My God will give me victory over you. And he's picturing it. He's picturing it in his mind. He's speaking it with his words. His faith is overcoming. Before he's even gone to the battle, he's breaking through the fear that wanted to put a limitation. He's breaking through the tradition that wanted to put a limitation. He had to break through the ceiling. And you and I have ceilings. Now you can decide. You can, these guys could have gone home and said, okay, we tried. Ceiling, we can't do it. Or you can break through. It's up to you. But I, for one, am, I do not accept any ceilings. Christ wants us to live under an open heaven. And if there's principalities or powers or there's mindsets or there's traditions of men that aren't true about God, then I'm going to break those things off. And I'm going to break through. And maybe it takes a while, a tile at a time, a prayer at a time, you know, a worship song at a time. But you and I got to break through those ceilings. So first you have to recognize them. What are those ceilings that try and limit you? What are they? And now what are you going to do about them? You got to get above them. Remove the ceiling. Remove the limitations. Jesus said all things are possible. That sounds pretty open, pretty wide open. That sounds pretty limitless. All things are possible. Oh, Jesus, you're just so exaggerating. You're just kind of hyping us up. You're such a faith guy, Jesus. You don't really mean all things. You probably just mean a few things. No, all things. He's trying to remove the limits from people's minds. All things. Do you and I believe that? Do you believe that? If not, somebody built a ceiling over you. And you have to decide to pull those tiles and traditions and lies and words of even, you know, maybe well-intended people, but that aren't true, that God didn't place over you. 
that try and limit you, you got to break out of those boxes. And sometimes they are principalities and powers. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the dark forces of this age. That's what we fight against. But you know, <laughs> the problem is people get afraid of that because they're like, ooh, principalities and powers and, you know, Jezebel and Leviathan and, and, and Satan and whatever other name <laughs> there may be, legions of these principalities and powers that want to rule over your cities and go, otter tail will never change. Our Abbotsford will never change, or Kamloops will never change, or Canada will never change, or, and, and, they, and they want, they want a place to reign. And sometimes we allow it because we're like, oh, they're big, and who are we? We're just small. We're just grasshoppers in their sight. They're just giants. They're principalities and powers, and we shouldn't fight them. Well, no, that's not what Ephesians says. It says we wrestle them. But there's a wrong way to wrestle them, and there's a right way to wrestle them. And the wrong way to wrestle him is from below. And the right way to wrestle him is from above. And uh, I don't have time to give you this whole teaching. But if you want to see breakthrough against principalities and powers and the rulers of the dark forces of this age, you have to do it from above. You have to realize they're under your feet. You have to come up here, come up higher, Jesus said. You have to come up here, come up higher. You have to get above your, see, if you think they're bigger than you and you're trying to change it from below, you still see yourself as so small and I can't do it. And you see yourself wrongly and Jesus says, come up here. Come up on top of this roof. Come and get above this problem. And he has to remind me of this all the time. I'm preaching to me because sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, I'm weary of fighting this situation. He goes, Nolan, just stop for a moment. Come and worship me. Come up a bit higher. Come up here. Come up now. And then I'm sitting up here, I'm like, whoa, that doesn't look so big from here. Those principalities and powers don't look so big when I'm above them. Th those obstacles, those mountains, they don't look so big now. Before, when I was down there, I felt like a grasshopper in their side. I'm too small, I'm too weak. But now I'm up here, I'm like, wait a minute. These enemies look like grasshoppers. They're under my feet. And Ephesians, Ephesians... Do not get into warfare in any way unless you understand this. Do not go to Ephesians 6 without going through Ephesians, the first part. And the first part says, Ephesians 1, Christ reigns and he's high above every principality and power that could ever be named in this life and in the life to come. Is Christ greater than anything that's against you? Yes. Is Christ greater than any sickness that's against you? Yes. Is Christ greater than any mountain, any storm, any principality, any sin, any addiction? Is there anything bigger than Christ? No. So if you get that straight, that he has all authority and he's over top of them. They have some power, he has all power. They have some authority, he has all authority. So he's greater. So do not go against them until you understand that. But still, that's not good enough. If you just understand Christ is bigger than them, but you're still down here. But Christ is up there reigning over them, but you're not. You're like, I'm little down here, and I'm being oppressed, and I'm being crushed, and I'm being overcome. That's why the next part of Ephesians, before it gets to Ephesians 6, says, no, no, no. You've been raised up. And you've been made to sit down. Where? In heavenly places. You're sitting on thrones. So these false dominions, these false principalities... These false authorities that are trying to rob from you and steal you and control our nations and control our cities and control our high places and control our children. They're liars and they're illegitimate authorities. And Christ says, if you could see that I've raised you up to sit with me in heavenly places and to exercise my authority, then you would learn how to fight against these things, not from below, but from above. And you'd begin, like these guys, to get above the ceiling and to break through any power that comes against our children, any power that comes against the church, any power that comes against the nation, any power and any principality, then we begin to understand, and then we can go like Moses to whatever Pharaoh may be, and we can say, let my people go, and we can stand before any giant like David before Goliath, who anyone who wants to curse us, and we will not fear them, because we say, I stand in the power of the name of my God, and I am one with him, and I've been raised up with him, and you are not over me, but I am over you. 
And then you begin to see your breakthrough because you take your authority that's been given to you, that's been given to you. But if you don't see it, how can you be it? If you don't see it, how can you be it? If you don't see it in you, you won't be able to release it out of you. If you don't see, you have to see yourself over it to get over it. You have to see Goliath falling before he falls. David said, I see you. And he said, I see you. I see your head in my hands. He said, I'll cut your head off this day. And then he did it. You have to see it to be it. You have to see it. That's why before Joshua went to battle, God stood before him as the Lord of hosts and said, you know, I'm the captain of the Lord of hosts and I'm going to be with you. And he said, you're going to be victorious. You have to see it. You have to see yourself healed to be healed. You have to see yourself prospering to begin to prosper. You got to begin to see your children free so that you could set them free. And, and, we, will, and we, we must no longer entertain these false powers and these false ideas and these false ceilings that get placed over the church. And if you can get three or four who can agree together, then we can break through. Three or four, if, if little groups, you say, hey man, let's fight for one another. Let's get up. You know, you, you, you guys get together and say, we're going to break through for our children. We're ripping off the roof. And we're going to set the bar higher. God has greater things. He's done great things here in Otter Tail. He's done great things in the fire starter. But this is, not your, this is not your ceiling. This is just your floor. Now look up. Look a little higher. Look a little further. Dream a little more. I want you to see the groups, the multitudes coming. Begin to call them in. Begin to prophesy to the dry bones. Begin to speak to those mountains, those powers, those giants and say, you're going to fall in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, be like Reinhard Bonk. Africa shall be saved. America shall be saved. Canada shall be saved. Otter tail shall be saved. The next generation shall rise up. They shall walk in the works of God. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faith. We have to lay hold of it. We have to see it by faith. First, we have to get above it. 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 Whoo. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I just want to help lift you up above it, my friends. And uh, I, f I feel like, like I'm a fighter, but I, I fight most fiercely for my family and my friends. And I I'm speaking the strong word even here tonight because I feel like you guys are like family and you're like friends. I love your community. I really, truly do. I love the laughter and the playing and the joking. I love it all. God's with us in all of it. But when it's time to fight, I'm like the first one. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's time to fight. I want to be the first one, you know, on the battlefield and the last one off. And not tell everyone, I want to see everybody free. I, 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 you know, I don't want three of my kids saved and the fourth one, okay, I got most of them. No, I'm getting them all. All your children shall be taught of the Lord. All your children shall be taught of the Lord. I don't want to just see some of the works when Jesus said, all the works that I do and more you shall you do. I want to see all the works. I want to see all that God has. The only limitations that I accept are the one that Christ puts over me. I'll submit to his sovereignty. Whatever he has, I'll say that's, that's, whatever limit you set, I'll hold that limit. But I will not allow any illegitimate authority, religious or worldly or witchcraft or any darkness to set any false authorities for me. I want to break those things down. I want to kick a hole through the roof. I want to kick a hole until I see the power of God loosed in your community. Whoa. <laughs> So that's why I fight like that. <laughs> that's why I preach like Jehu. And so God has some great things, but we're going to get above it, and we're going to rip the roof off. And uh, this is the last thing I say, and then we're going <laughs> we're to we're do this. <laughs> um, it, ends with, it ends with this. It ends with what we all want to see. We've seen extraordinary things. You know what that word is? Extraordinary. I'm thankful for all the ordinary things. I'm thankful for like, I, I love like just a cup of coffee or, you know, I'm like, that's, a, or, that's just a beautiful blessing. I love a sunset and a sunrise. I love a laugh with a friend. Like, I love all the gifts of God. You know, all the things of this world that he gives us, every good and perfect gift. I'm so thankful. But I also want to see the extraordinary things. I, and I don't have to choose one or the other. I, you know, I, I love the slowly and the suddenly. I love the peace and the power. I love the gentle whisper, and I love the violent rushing wind. I want to have the best of earth and the best of heaven. I, I want to see all that he has for me, and I want to see all that he has for you. But I want to see extraordinary things. 
I want to see things that I've never seen before. I, I'm so thankful for things that I've seen, but I want to see things that I've never seen before. I want to I say, wow, I've never seen anything like this. I want to be in awe. I don't want to become complacent. Oh, yeah, I've seen that before. Ah, yeah. I want to go, whoa. I, I feel like I'm standing in a river I've never stood before. Whoa, I'm feeling a breeze I've never felt before. Whoa, there's a fire burning in me I've never felt before. I want to touch the greater things, the extraordinary things. But I believe the reason that whole community saw extraordinary things is because extraordinary, because four people did something. Let's just say they're four. A group of people, friends, they did extraordinary things. Because it's not ordinary to go up on a roof. It's not ordinary to start ripping tiles off a building. Wouldn't you say that's like ordinarily you go through the door? That's an extraordinary. And I'm not saying we always have to do something extraordinary, but there's times when the power of the Lord is present. You go, oh, something, this is a, these are days of power coming. We need to, and we're going to do a little extra. We're going to pray just a little extra. And I tell people, even if it's five minutes extra than normally, go a little extra. We're going to worship a little extra. My hands are tired, but I'm going to hold them up a little extra. Normally I just give this much, but I feel like I want to see extraordinary things. I'm going to do a little extra. I'm going to get up on my roof. I had a roof of what I normally like to give. I'm going to get up a little higher and just, and maybe it's, maybe it's a dollar more. I'm not saying like, oh, you got to do some extraordinary, like, like just extra ordinary. Here's what you ordinarily do. Do something a little extra. Imagine if we all just do a little extra. What if we all just pull one tile off? Hey, that matters. You know, what if we all just fill that water a little bit? Until that whole thing's full. And then he does the miracle and turns it to wine that we've never tasted before. So he does extraordinary things. You know, he said, which is easier? To say, rise up and walk? And I'm like, well, to be honest, God, that's, that's, neither one is easy for me. <laughs> I, I don't find it easy to forgive sins, and neither do you. I find it hard to forgive. And I don't find it easy to make paralyzed people walk. <laughs> I don't find it easy. But you do. You forgive. And you heal. So I'm not saying you have to do the thing. Like, the parts that is God's to do is what you must do. I mean, it's what God must do. Let God do his part. Every miracle that happens, there's some partnership that happens. And God gives you, he's like, just do the ordinary and then a little extra. You fill the water pots with water. Hey, you can do that, can't you? Yeah, I can fill the water pots with water. He goes, I'll turn it to wine. You move the stone, Martha Mary. I'll raise Lazarus from the dead. He didn't tell them, go ahead, raise him. I'll raise him. You just do your part. Just do it and maybe a little extra. Play your part. Do something just a little more than you've done. Maybe one step further than you've got. Maybe for you, you've never raised your hand. I tell people, maybe the, the like I'd never seen my, my, my boy like raise his hands. And all of a sudden he just lifted his hands. A little ordinary thing to do. But that was for him was extraordinary. I'm like, whoa. And all of a sudden the power of God fell on him. And he's just being overwhelmed but that was God who touched him. But he just did this one little thing. This seemed ordinary. God meets us in that little extra that's for us. And what might be extra for you, God's not going to tell you to do my extra. Like some people are telling me these incredible stories of giving. And sometimes I'll tell you I've been through some difficult times financially. And I can go, oh, I start to get, oh, I'm scared to give. And then God's like, hey, stop that. Just step out a little bit. Give a little bit more than you've, you should just stretch it out a little bit. So for my son, it might be stretching his hand out. For someone else, it might be, I'm going to just dance a little bit. <laughs> and you might feel dumb, but you're taking that step. You're getting above your roof. You're getting above your fears. You're getting above your limitations. And I have them. I, I, I hope I come here and inspire you, but I want you to realize these are all things that I'm fighting through to get above my roof. I, I have so many roofs to break through that try and limit me, but I refuse them. That's all. I refuse them, and I keep ripping tiles off. And I know we're going to see extraordinary things. Why don't you stand up with me? Woo, who? Now, <laughs> I felt like there was uh, two things we're supposed to do to close here. One was to pray, and that Christ would help you pick, get up above it. What, what's, what's the roof that's been placed over you? And I got so many, you know, and probably so do you. So you go, ah, oh, this. But I want you to begin to picture yourself getting up above it.
come up here, come up higher. Just picture yourself right now. Instead of picturing it over you, I want you to picture yourself over it. Okay? You're up above it now. You're cli- I want you just to climb up even in your, in your mind, in your heart. You're up above it. Jesus ke- keeps saying things to us like it's under our feet. Because we don't feel like it's under our feet. But I want you to see it under you. Those things that have lorded themselves over you, I want, them, I want you to see them under you. Okay? Get up above it. And then from above we break through. Kicking down. Kicking down at the enemy. So I want you to lift your hands up with me. We're going to pray. We're going to do two things. We're going to pray for some breakthroughs that roofs to be ripped off our homes and our lives, our churches and our families and our communities. That we would do a little extra than normal. And, I'll, and if it's stretching you, just come on. There's a breakthrough for you. But let's, let's, we're going to pray. And then I felt like God said, I felt like how he's going to rip the roof off to end this was just high praise and celebration. So I feel like he's like, I'm going to release great power and great joy and, and in this place. And so we're just going to, I just told him, let's just rip it. Let's just rip the roof off and celebrate. Let's just rip the roof off. But, but first, let's start, let's start just with us, okay? And so have you got like a, and when you can go home and you work this word out and pray and just begin to picture yourself breaking through those things, breaking through those things that have held you. But it's going to happen, I think, after in worship. You know, Paul and Silas were in prison and they could have said, well, here we are in prison. And, you know, obviously the prison authority is over us. And, and, you know, we've been beat up and the enemy beat us up. We're in the lowest prison. You know what they did to break out of prison? They just began to worship. They came up higher. They got out of the prison. They, they first escaped the prison and worship. They're like, we're not in this prison. We're up above it. And they began to pray. And then God shook the whole prison. They broke through from above. And we're going to break through. And your prisons are going to be shook. And not only are you going to be set free from those limitations, those prisons, those ceilings, but the, when the prison shook, everybody around them began to get set free. And that's what happened in this story. Everybody said, whoa, everybody got seized. I believe as we break through for revival, people begin to be awakened and changed all around us. Our family goes, wow, something changed right around this time. And, and all because you got up above it and you broke through, not only for you, but let's break through for somebody else. They were breaking through for a friend. They were breaking through for their family. I want to break through for my kids. I want to break through for my friends. I want to break through for my neighbors. I want to, you know, I fought for you guys so hard in, this, in your election that you had because I love America. And I said, I want to see breakthrough for them. And I don't want to see, you know, any principality or power. And I'm, now I'm fighting for my nation, for Canada to be, you know, we're, we're going to see great revival, a great revival. Is there difficulties? Yes. But we're, we're the head and we're, not the, and we're not the tail. We're above and we're not beneath. Okay, let's lift our hands up and pray. And then after we pray, we're going to celebrate like we're free. <laughs> we're going to celebrate like nothing's over us and everything's under us. God, we just hold our hands up to you. And we say you're the God of breakthrough. You're the God of breakthrough. But you want to bring breakthrough by our hands. You want to break through like the breakthrough of many waters. And God, I pray for great breakthrough. And I pray that whatever ceilings have been placed over this place that aren't from you, that you'd rip them off in the name of Jesus. That you would change our mindsets. You change the way we think. You change the way we speak. You change, and even just rip the roof off of otter tail. God, all things are possible for those who believe. All things, remove any limitations. Break through religious traditions. Break through our unbelief. Break through any ceiling. We don't want to receive any of those ceilings. I pray for breakthrough. And we just begin to see them under our feet. We just begin to see those giants falling. We begin to see our sicknesses being healed. We begin to see our sons and daughters set free. We begin to envision our neighborhoods being transformed. We can imagine America being saved. We can imagine Canada being saved. All things are possible for those who believe. We want to see extraordinary things. We want to see extraordinary things. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And now, God, I, I pray you'd help us to do even one little extra thing. Maybe we just pray, and this is my challenge to you. Even if it's like, you know, five minutes longer than you normally would, or you hold up your hands, or you dance, do something a little bit extra. And let God speak to you. I'm not telling you what it is. It, it might be, hey, you know, you feel moved to give something extra. That might be your breakthrough. It might be that you pray something extra. That you would never think of praying, and, and God says, ask me for something great. And, and you go, okay, this. And he goes, yes, I love that. You just asked for something extra that you normally wouldn't. And even if it's one step further than you normally go or one reach further, you know, I don't know what your extra is. It's, it's going to be different than my extra. But uh, I just want to encourage you to do that. And then, and then we're just going to worship until, uh, <laughs> until the roof rips off. Okay, let's lift up our hands one more time. I feel like the power of the Lord wants to be present in this place to heal, 
to deliver, to prosper. Oh, God. No more roofs. We're going to rip it off tonight. We're going to worship. We're going to worship. We're going to celebrate. We're going to shout. We're going to dance. We're going to leap. When the sun sets free, we're going to be free. We're going to rip the roof off. So, God, I just pray for the extra, because you saw their faith. See our faith. Let Christ see faith in you today and just do a little something extra and we're going to see extraordinary things. Whether it happens tonight, whether it happens tomorrow, but, and even, maybe it's, don't discourage yourself. If you, if you only rip one tile off, I want to say to you, thank you. If you only put a widow's mite in there, I say, thank you. That was a little extra. If you only, if you just like stretch your faith just a little bit and you just pray one small prayer, thank you. Every little thing you do is something that's going to, God's going to use to bring breakthrough. So, uh, Let's worship the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord. Let's shout before the Lord. Let's rejoice before the Lord. Let the walls fall down. Let the roofs be ripped off. And let revival roll all through Minnesota, all through America, all through the nations. Are you guys ready? Come up here. Come up higher. Let's go give him high praise. Let's 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 give him the high praise. Let's give him the highest 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 praise in Jesus' name. There's power in the name of Jesus. All things are under his authority.
Everything we know is gonna change, yeah. Open the doors, open the gates. Everything we know is gonna change.
know, the Bible says that this is victory that overcomes the world, uh, even our faith, even our faith. And so uh, <laughs> what I want you to do right now, just this is the greatest act of faith, is whatever you're believing for, that breakthrough, maybe it's in your family. I, I was, when I was dancing, I started to shout like revival town. I could picture your town just a revival town. And, uh, but maybe it's your children. Just picture them saved, all of them, just on fire. <laughs> or maybe it's just that you've been fighting, you know, for your prosperity. And I want you just to picture your, 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 your vats filled, overflowing. Just by faith, just see it, see it. See yourself healed by faith. See yourself set free. Maybe it's for freedom from a sin or a fear or a pain. I want you to see it just by faith. And just thank God and worship God like it's already done. <laughs> see it. See yourself above it. See, see your enemies crushed under your feet. Picture the table there for you. And just by faith. Uh, and and uh, that's, that's what pulls the tile off. So as we just keep worshiping, I want you to just let it all be an act of faith. Because faith is what moves mountains. By faith they overcame. By faith the walls fell down. By faith, David triumphed. So just, just see it in your mind. <laughs> see it? Can you picture it with the eyes of faith? Because if you can picture it with the eyes of faith, you're going to see it with your eyes. <laughs> You'll see it in, in the natural. It'll manifest. But just begin to see it and just praise God. Thank Him. I'm going to do that right now as we worship. As they, you guys just take it wherever you feel. <laughs> But I want to tell you, I want to say to you, I believe that this is going to be a revival town. A revival town. Many, many, many will come to this place. So I thank God for all that you've done, all that you've seen. But this is, that's just your floor. That's not your ceiling. This is just the beginning. <laughs> so just being to see this, this place just filled with His glory, with His extraordinary, ex mighty works with people just flocking in and going out and just picture the glory of God going out in your community. Just begin to see it. And uh, it will come. Amen.
days are coming, saith the Lord, of refreshing. The days are coming that are full of blessing. The days are coming when my spirit will be poured out upon. And your children, your sons and your daughters would prophesy. Your old men would dream again. They dream again. looking again for the old days, God. We're looking for what lies ahead over the horizon where the sun is rising with healing in his wings. Lift your voices on. 